thankful, you know, which I think people used to have, you know, um, were thankful and grateful for the food they were going to receive. I think we put a lot of emotions around almost every single thing we eat. So is that good for me? Is that bad for me? Um, and I just feel it's been like, I feel a lot of it's been prey to kind of probably big, you know, you were just saying that when things go viral, or, you know, a lot of big kind of, um, you know, sort of food companies or, you know, have actually been prey to a lot of um, what we consider good food or not good food. And I, it often, you know, so the thing about the avocado or the chia seed or the acai or the whatever, there are no superfoods. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And when I say that, I mean, you're not, there's no one food that you're going to eat that's going to turn you into Superman. Mm -hmm. It's just, it doesn't work like that. And so, um, and I feel like sometimes I think people, especially vegan and that's, you know, like absolutely, you know, that's great if that's what you want to be. But I think sometimes it's misintentioned. I don't really think people know the true global impact of also some of the, the kind of, you know, what people want from eating vegan. And I think that people blanket things. And I think sometimes they don't realize that like small, um, small dairy herds or small, you know, farms raising meat are actually carbon sequesters and are actually really good for the environment. You know, I think it's just we eat on steroids now. You know what I mean? So everything is vast, you know. So we have these huge feedlots or huge soy crops or, you know, the whole of America is probably five crops or monocrops and all of them are to prolong or cheapen mm -hmm. food or feed animals. There's very little biodiversity. And anyway, so I always wonder, like the one thing I would just say is like I think the very... I, the one question I would say that everybody should ask in terms of wellness is where was my food grown? Mm -hmm. And, you know, if it was grown in good, clean, nutrient-dense soil and it probably hasn't come, come very far, it's probably going to be very good for you. I mean, I think what you've got to remember is also all of those foods that are flown in from Peru, like blueberries or blackberries, I mean, food retains nutrient value for about three to four days. So if you're eating a blueberry, which if it's come from Peru, it's probably about two and a half weeks old. It's very, um, it's unlikely to have very much um, nutrient value left in it, whereas food grown locally, close to home, eaten in season. I mean, nature is miraculous, so it's going to give you what you need. Like I, the one thing, and then I will be quiet because I do know I'm a preacher. But I mean, like I, the first time when I started, like a really long time ago, really understanding and talking about seasonality, I was completely blown away that citrus was a winter fruit. Because mm. to me, it like, looks like sun. And then I realized how brilliant nature was, that it provides citrus and mm -hmm. vitamin C through the winter. And the same with all the beautiful kales you were talking about before. And all those inky, dark, fiber-rich, like full of vitamin um, uh, winter vegetables, you know, that are kind of amazing for us. So, so I think we try and chase, and this is the last thing we're going to say, sorry. I do not believe whoever, whatever is up there, when we were, um, you know, when it was, you know, I think nature's so brilliant that someone would say to you, you are only going to be healthy in the UK if you can get that acai berry from over on the other side of the world, or you're never going to be really nourished until you can have coconut water. You know what I mean? It's just, it's like, it's so whack. It's so mm -hmm. crazy to me. Anyway. Um, but I'm going to um, be quiet. Yeah.